Hey guys, how's it going? Dapo Willis here. Now guys, today I'm going to be speaking about why oil prices drop to zero dollars a barrel. Now guys, I remember vividly very well on the 20th of April, which happened to be my birthday, unfortunately, oil prices did drop to zero dollars a barrel. You can imagine I'm on the phone speaking to family and friends and then I turn on the news, bam, oil prices have dropped to zero dollars a barrel. Now, I know most of you out there are wondering why this did happen. So I decided to put together this video, you know, from as being a financial trader coming from the market's perspective, why did oil prices actually drop to zero dollars a barrel? Now, guys, if you're interested in finding out why this did happen, I suggest you stick around to the very end of this video. Now guys, if you're like myself who comes from an oil producing country, when oil did drop to zero dollars a barrel on the 20th of April, you must have most likely gone into some form of panic. Now, um, I know most oil producing countries rely solely on oil, in the price of oil and the revenue that they make from oil to fund their government expenditure. Now, what happens when oil prices drop? Obviously, these countries can no longer fund their, you know, government expenditure they can no longer fund projects and stuff like that and this is actually what leads most economies into a recession now i know most of you guys are worried so i decided to put together this video you know just to basically explain to you guys why this happened to oil now guys before i get into that you have to understand that oil historically hadn't been doing so well so between 2015 to 2016, late 2014, 2015, 2016, oil had been struggling. Oil literally went from $130 a barrel and crashed all the way down to $22 a barrel. Now, that's a discussion for another day. So between 2016 all the way back to 2018, oil managed to recover. So we went from about $22 a barrel all the way back up to $62 a barrel so we were trading about 62 dollars a barrel for a bit we were fluctuating between 62 all the way down to what 51 now this was really good for a lot of the oil producing economies because that meant that they could sell oil quite profitably as opposed to how they were selling it back in 2015 for just 22 dollars a barrel now the real question in everybody's mind was why the hell did oil now drop to zero dollars a barrel like this has never happened before how the hell did oil now drop to zero dollars a barrel on the 20th of april now guys you have to understand that this actually happened for two reasons and the first reason being obviously covid19 COVID-19 came into the picture at about late November, early December. Most of you guys who are watching this video only got to hear about COVID-19 in January, February. But you have to understand that COVID-19 was already hitting the Chinese economy really hard from late, late November to early December. So what this meant was the Chinese government had to start shutting down economies like factories, you know, stuff like that. So what happens when the, the largest, the world's largest consumer of oil starts to shut down, oil prices start to dwindle. So COVID-19 came in, right? COVID-19 came in, shut down the Chinese economy and started affecting other parts of the world. So what happens when, you know, the largest consumer of oil, you know, can no longer do business? the demand for oil automatically starts to dwindle. And obviously, with the rest of the other guys like the United Kingdom and the US and the rest of all, the rest of, everybody was shutting out, right? So planes were not flying, nobody was going anywhere. Not even just China, they told us to stay at home. So this carried on from about early December all the way you know, down into February. So oil prices dropped from about $50 a barrel all the way down to $30 a barrel. So COVID-19 was the first catalyst to actually bring oil all the way from $50 down to $30 a barrel. Now, the second reason why oil actually started to drop, now you have to understand that COVID-19 brought it from 50 all the way down to 30. Now, what now actually did happen was the major producers of oil in the world, being Saudi Arabia and Russia, had a meeting with OPEC and they both agreed that, okay, look, COVID-19 has come into the picture. Planes are not flying anymore. People are going to be staying in their houses. People are not buying petrol. China, for goodness sake, has shut down. So what do we do about this? So the, Ch 
the Saudi government and the Russian government both agreed on a round table that they were going to cut production, right? But something really bad happened, right? So the Russians flew back to Moscow and the Saudis flew back to Saudi Arabia and the Russians went back to Moscow and instead of fulfilling the agreement that they had with the, with the Saudi Arabian government, they went back to Moscow and not only did they refuse to cut production, they actually went and what doubled their production. Now the Saudi government hearing about this got really, really pissed and they were like, you know what? F you guys, fuck you guys. If you guys wanna play this battle, I can play this battle as well. So as the Russian government doubled production, so did the Saudi government. Now guys, you have to understand that COVID brought the prices from 50 to 30. With this double in production from both, I wouldn't even call it a double in production, I'll call it a price war. With this price war going on between Saudi and the Russian government, oil prices further declined from 30 all the way down to 15. All right guys, so at this point, we're now currently trading at $15 a barrel, right? $15 a barrel is really low. We're actually trading between $15 to $12 a barrel. Me being a very smart trader, I'd already started short selling oil from about, um, once, like right after COVID struck, I was shorting oil from about $42 a barrel you know, all the way down into 80, because I didn't feel it was going to go lower than 18. And then obviously the Saudi government and the Russian government having all these issues, they drove the prices down to what, $15 a barrel. Now guys, so we're tr we were trading about $15 a barrel all the way in from March, late March, all the way into middle of April. So $15 a barrel, $12 a barrel, it was, you know, it was battling around, along those regions. And then on this fateful day, on the 20th of April, being my birthday, guys, you have to understand, it was absolutely crazy because like I said earlier, I was speaking to my family, I was having all this, you know, phone calls coming in, everybody was calling me happy birthday, happy birthday, and then, you know, I was feeling absolutely on top of the world, and then I turned the TV on, and what do I see? Oil prices have what crashed to not $5 a barrel, but $0 a barrel. As a matter of fact, oil prices have actually hit minus $1 a barrel. Why did this happen? Now guys, how do you go from trading at $15 a barrel to $0 a barrel? On the 20th of April, like I said earlier guys, the US oil producers, Exxon Mobil, Chevron, Mobil, and the likes of them, they were pumping all this oil, you know, everything, okay, if it's cool, it's $15, $12 a barrel, we can still make a profit. And so they were pumping all this oil. And then it got to a point that they realized that, listen, we've pumped so much oil that we have nowhere else to keep it. They're like, okay, let's ship some oil down to the refineries. Let's tell the refineries to keep the oil for, for us, you know, pending, you know, how long this whole COVID-19 shutdown takes. And the refineries are telling them that, listen, we don't have any more capacity to keep your oil. There's no more, we don't have any more space. They're like, okay, cool. Let's keep the oil on the oil tankers. Now, oil tankers are the massive vessels, the ships that take the oil from the rigs from where they produce the oil all the way down to the refinery. So like, let's store them on these ships, let's store them on the vessels, pending when all this happened. And the vessels are safe, we are full as well. Literally, there were over, what was it, about 10 dozen ships floating on the coast of the United States, all filled with oil to the brim. So the oil companies were like, okay, let's store it in-house. And then the in-house team were telling them like, listen, we're filled up to the brim. So what actually happened was, there was all this supply but there was zero demand. And you all know what happens, basic economics. Once there's all this supply and there's no demand, literally once there's a glut in the market, the prices tend to fall. So literally guys, that is exactly what caused oil prices to drop to zero dollars a barrel. Like literally it was so bad guys that oil companies even stopped, to, they stopped selling oil. Like they were paying storage facilities to please keep their oil for them, literally. It was so bad that they were, pay, they were paying people to keep the oil for them. The oil, the drum that they used to store the oil was actually now more expensive than the oil inside. Oil became absolutely worthless. Now guys, this is a real issue. Um, this is something that did happen. I'm not just making this up. As you can see, if you can rewind back two, three weeks from now, you can see everything I'm saying. Actually, the truth. Now, um... This does pose a lot of threat to oil producing countries, especially countries who 
depend so much on oil revenue okay they depend so much on their oil proceeds that if oil prices are this low they can no longer fund their expenditure but what does this mean for you how can you ensure that you your family your loved ones are all immune to this now guys you guys especially if you live in an oil producing country you need and i don't care if you don't live in an oil producing country because low oil prices just has a way of having a ripple effect across the global economy right whatever job it is you're working on you might just feel like oh i'm good guys oil prices just have a way of fucking everybody up now the question is how do you position yourself in such a way whereby low oil prices prices don't actually affect yourself your family and your loved ones. now what i would advise you guys to go ahead and do is this you need to go ahead and pick up new skills. The internet is the new freaking oil wells, right? I look at, if you look behind me, this is what I call a sales funnel. Literally, I built this sales funnel. Instead of calling it a, my sales funnel, uh, a series of pages that help you make money online, right? So instead of calling this a sales funnel, I actually call this my oil rig because my oil well is now the internet. You need to go learn a skill that will enable you go into the, in, in the internet is the new marketplace. You need to go learn a new skill that will enable you go into the marketplace, which is now the internet and extract money and put it in your pocket. You have to understand that the internet is immune because this is, we're talking globally, right? We're talking everybody in the world. There's always going to be money in the world, right? Forget about if oil prices are low or high. There, all there's always going to be what money in the world. So, guys, you need to learn a skill that, regardless of oil prices, you're still going to be able to feed your family. Now guys, I suggest you check out one of these videos uh, right about. I'm going to pop up one about here. If you're watching this on Facebook or Instagram or wherever it is you're watching this, I suggest you check out my YouTube channel. One of these videos. I speak about the seven high income skills you need to learn today in order for you to start making at least $2,000 a month from the internet. Now guys, I hope I've been able to provide you guys value. I, for those of you trading expert, oil expert, I, as you can see, I didn't really want to go in depth into this topic because I wanted every other person to watch this video and understand exactly what I was saying. If you catch me on one of my webinars where I'm always analyzing the market, you will hear me go really, really, really in depth, obviously speaking about all the, all the financial terms and all that kind of stuff. So guys, if you found this video helpful, do me a little favor, smash that subscribe button, drop me a comment, and I'll catch you guys in my subsequent videos. All right, guys, take it easy and peace out.